So I saw this really cute video on the internet mm -hmm. today. It was a school principal singing, and he's out there with his snowblower, and he's got his Christmas jammies on and everything. And it's all just to announce that there's no school today, that it's a snow day. <laughs> this is Jill for today, and this is what? <laughs> it's been so long. Do you remember what this is called? Oh, uh... Signature glass of mimosa. Of mimosa. Signature glass of wine. Happy holidays, everyone. Oh, gosh, there's a phone. I'm going to have to turn it off. So put that on hold for just a moment. So shall we try this again? Sure. I didn't get the... Did you get a sip? I did, and it's good. Dang. <laughs> Happy holidays. Mmm. Mm. What a nice way to start off a Friday morning before Christmas. I woke up this morning and everything's white. Yes, we had quite a snow ice storm here t uh, yesterday. Of course, I think all over the, all over the country. Yeah. Well, it's supposed to continue through today. Yeah. Too. A lot of ice, mm -hmm. freezing rain. The streets got this much uh, ice on them. Actually, we're a lot warmer today because we're a refreshing, 21 degrees right now. And uh, oh man. But yesterday we got down to a real feel just below zero. So. And we lost our power. Yeah. Fortunately, it was only for two and a half hours. Oh my but, gosh. Uh, oh. We were sitting in front of the fireplace. and Well, it's an electric fireplace, so you don't get no, a lot. No, it's a gas fireplace. Oh, it's a gas fireplace. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't I've put out a lot of heat. I've lived here 20 years. <laughs> it doesn't put out a lot of heat, but it's better than freezing to death. Yeah. So. Anyway, so we haven't done this for a while. In fact, I, had a, I have a friend in Australia, and she said, you know... I think I'm missing that signature glass of wine, and if I'm missing it, there's a lot of other people who are missing right. it. So, and it's not that we didn't want to do it, it's just been crazy time around here. In September... You know, normal. That's the truth. In September, we, this is going to be a long one, get your mimosa and sit down. In September, okay. we decided to change out our heaters because it had been 20 years. It was my suggestion. I said, yeah. you know... These things, they're in-wall, um, forced air, in-wall. Electric fan. Yeah. I said, it's been 20 years. It's like a toaster. You know the little things that run in a toaster? And eventually, you know, they just get old. Kind of like me. So we decided to change out the heaters. Well, we're still working on changing out the We finally got heat two weeks ago. Yeah. What happened was, you know, the old heaters had worked fine for... 19 years, we had had new electronic thermostat, programmable thermostat put in. So anyway, we decided it made sense, especially with the holes in the walls, to replace the heaters with the same identical model, makes which sense they to still me. make. Well, the company that makes them is in Canada. <laughs> so they had an American distributor, we ordered them, brought them in, <laughs> set them up, they didn't work. So they sent us a part. Oh, excuse me. Let me just run something in here. We had professional electricians come in. It wasn't right. us. Yeah. So they came in, set them up. Anyway, we've been going back and forth since mid-September trying to get these straightened away. We finally, uh, yesterday, the Canadian company wrote us and said they're sending us two entirely brand new heaters. But that's it. That's all I'm going to do. After that, it's our it's on our dime to get those old heaters taken out, new ones put in. And by the way, they say we have the wrong thermostat for these heaters, so we're going to have to purchase a new heat, a new thermostat, which also comes from this Canadian company, and have that installed at our expense. But we have heat right now. We do and have we're heat. We're extremely thankful. It's just a little slow. Mm -hmm. It's got a little. It's got some hiccups. Yeah. But we do Glitches. have heat. Glitches. But we do have. Yeah. So anyway, we're happy we have heat. Very. Uh, both the electrician and the company in Canada have been very nice. Mm -hmm. uh, company in Canada a little slow, but uh, they've been responsive. Yes, they have. Very, very nice. actually, very responsive. Yeah. And the electrician here has really gone above and beyond. And, uh, yeah. So we're happy. We're semi-warm again. That's been occupying a lot of our time. Um, I, of course, have my floor loom, and that's been, uh, you know, occupying my time. So that's good. And um, I've been cooking. In fact, I did, 
I did some awesome recipes that I'm going to start cranking out. If you haven't seen that cranberry pecan orange bread recipe, I'm posting it right up here. You got to go in there and you got to watch that video and you need to make that bread. Add just a little more orange juice a little to bit. the recipe. In fact, I told him this morning what I think would be maybe even better is a orange juice concentrate. Now, I had made this bread before, and I think I did when we were not vegan, and I veganized it now. I still think maybe a little more orange juice you concentrate. You know what I was wondering? Mm -mm. How would a little brandy or bourbon be in that? What we could do is poke holes in it like you do with fruitcake uh -huh. and drizzle it on there so it sinks down in. Or what you could do is make the cake just like it is and pour a big glass of bourbon to go alongside it. He's got it. He's got it. So, okay, so we've been doing always that. Thinking. He's always thinking. Uh, we, okay, my doctor, my oncologist, and by the way, by the way, my oncology blood work looks good. I'm anemic. And my platelets are low, which is expected with the kind of uh, bone marrow slash uh, multiple myeloma cancer I have. But she's not concerned about it. Um, but, okay, so she had given me kind of a soft green light. That, yeah, you know, if you know people you can trust and they haven't been around someone who's, you know, been exposed to COVID who hasn't. And they've had their boosters. Yeah. Why don't you go ahead and enjoy the holiday season and, and visit people? Well, then, of course, the COVID thing is up, the terrible flu, and RSV. And I had actually my oncology appointment today, and she said, I still feel this is the best route is to not do it. So, no visiting. Mm -mm. Continue to wear masks. Yeah. So that's fine. We'll just hang out till spring. We've been doing it for, do you know, next month, February, it will be three years since we have done anything yeah gone anywhere been anywhere done anyone i mean nothing <laughs> done anyone <laughs> yeah. but we're happy yeah we're happy yeah we got you know we have heat again which is good we have great music we have uh, wonderful books um we've got each other we got love so we speaking of books and got food we have got food <laughs> food we have seen some terrific movies and read some amazing books recently. Now, yesterday, for a matter of fact, because I think that's the only movie I'm going to remember, we saw The Man Who Invented, Invented Christmas. Yeah. Oh, my word. It's a rental, you know, like on demand. It's a rental, four bucks. And my goodness, that is a really interesting, good movie. It's about Charles Dickens and the process he went through in writing A Christmas Carol. Yep, you've got a little which, hair there inspired me to pick up A Christmas Carol and start reading it. And it's only 106 pages. To have that kind of effect in a 106-page short story, yeah, amazing. It is. And I am right now reading about Julia Child. For some, for some reason, I'm kind of fixated on Julia Child right now. Oh, well, because we saw this, the miniseries was it called Julia? Mm -hmm. Well, we have we you know we keep hopping around to apps, and I think that was on Brickbox. No, Brickbox or Masterpiece, something like yeah. that. Yeah, and it's called Julia, and there's I think eight episodes, and it is really good, and it's about Julia Child. So I've been watching the old videos on YouTube, her cooking videos, and I just picked up the book called D Dear uh, Darling. Deary. Deary. Oh, my. Deary. And it is a biography about Julia Child. And I think anything that you know about Julia Child should just be thrown out the window. If you've seen Julie and Julia, which I own because I love it so much, or that miniseries, the book is really good. And it's different from what we've seen on movies and TV. So I recommend it highly. You've read some great books. I've been reading a lot of Stephen King and Michael Conley. And, uh, um, you know, Stephen King is strange because uh, a couple of his books I've read recently, like the first half of the book is very normal. There's no supernatural thing at all. And he's got such a phenomenal writing style. Just a plain story just sucks you in yeah. and just... You read it and enjoy it so much, and then he goes off to La La Land, and it's still interesting, but 
you know, uh, even the the simple stuff, the plain, normal, everyday stuff. He's a gifted writer. So I read that, and now I just started uh, Ron Chernow's uh, biography of Alexander Hamilton. Uh, I looked it up. The hardback is 818 pages or something, but I'm reading it on an e-reader, you know, a nook. <laughs> it's 2,056 pages, so... I don't know if I'll get it done in the 21 days they allow me. We have little chickadees going oh crazy goodness, right outside our window here. And, uh, well, I read uh, Stephen King's Billy Summers just recently, and what an interesting book, really. And it's a very interesting book. And it, I don't cry normally when I read a book. And not, not uh, well, it was so beautiful. And that's what made me cry. It wasn't necessarily sad. It was just beautiful. So I recommend that book. Um, any other movies? We've seen a lot of movies. We just watched an old one, a classic. That oh, we yes. just love. Uh, Spencer Tracy and Catherine Hepburn in Desk Set. It's uh, it's kind of a Christmas movie. It's oh, it is at, a Christmas yeah, movie. Yeah, it's set at Christmas time, but it's so enjoyable. Oh, it's funny. It's delightful. It's it's Spencer Tracy and Catherine Hepburn. It's like, how could it get any better? Right, and we watched... Gig Young is in it. There you go, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Dina Merrill. Mm-hmm. Joan Blondell. Yeah. Anyway, uh, we also watch Love Actually, uh, which we do at least once a year because mm-hmm. it's one of our favorite films. And... Uh, you know, we go through the Christmas movies, and some you know so well, you know, it just doesn't pay to see them yeah. every year. But uh, Christmas with the Cranks we watch, and of course that's always fun. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. The one I'm really looking forward to, is, which I see every year, is about the Waltons uh, at Christmas time. It's called The Homecoming with Andrew Duggan and Patricia Neal. That, and, that came out in 71-ish? Yeah, something like that. But yeah. it's a beautiful film. Oh, it is beautiful. Cleveland Littles in it. And, uh, yeah, it's a yeah. very good, very good. Andrew Duggan. William Wyndham. Uh-huh, and uh, Thomas, uh, Thomas. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Richard Thomas. Richard Thomas. I was sitting there thinking, I know that Senior name. moment, sorry. <laughs> And let's see what else can we tell them. I don't know. You know, life is life. Yeah. I turned seventy. Oh my Seven. God! What kind of a bad joke <laughs> is that? She's gonna have to kill you all now because she told you how old she is. So. Oh, you know, it, here's the problem. And I was telling my friend, I don't feel seventy. You know, I don't. I feel like maybe I'm forty. I have this very youth, what I consider kind of youthful brain. And then the body kicks in, and the body says, "Guess what, Jill? You are, you are 70 years old. We used to clean the house in one day. I'm talking top to bottom, dusting, vacuuming the bathrooms, the kitchen, the whole bit. Well, now we spread it out because it's too makes on sense. Us. One of the things the cancer and the chemo has done in age maybe is um, she tires out easily. I do. Know? I mean, I'm always tired, so but I'm 76. One thing I've been doing to really help uh, with us, because I'll tell you, some nights I get, you know, it's about 3, 30, 4 o'clock, and I say, God, I can't cook. I, you know, I'm tired. And I do, it's not that I don't do anything during the day. He always calls me the Energizer Bunny. Well, my batteries begin to, you know, kick down a little notch or two. I have been making frozen dinners, and I'll leave a link. No, I can't leave a link. It's in my Amazon store, and I'll leave a link in the description box down below. I have bought these, they're containers, they're microwave, freezer, the whole bit safe, and they're reusable, and they've got a, li- they're kind of like the things you might find at a deli, you know, when you, they're given uh, di- dinner to you. I think they're a little heavier, and I make us up little dinners now with enough, uh, whatever the protein is, like, well, we had a garden uh, turkey for uh, Thanksgiving, and we had leftovers, so I put some of that in there, I put some of my fabulous dressing in there, gravy, Heated that up last night, and we had some string beans and some cranberry sauce along the line. I've done uh, enchiladas. Yeah. Uh, meatloaf. Remember, I did a meatloaf, and I'll yeah. leave that link up there. I did a meatloaf recipe, and we'd mashed potatoes in there and the meatloaf, and that has helped so much. Christmas, we're having a lasagna, 
And I, my hopes are that I make enough that I can have dinner and then cut that baby up and put it in the... You know, I was raised on meat and potatoes, and we've been vegan again this time for about a year. Mm -hmm. And the faux meat industry has come so far it's amazing that even somebody who loves their meat there's just no reason to eat it it just everything is so good um so many like one of the meals we'll have over the holidays is broccoli beef with a faux beef and it's every That's bit as good as what we so get good. at our favorite chinese restaurant mm -hmm. and uh and the meatballs Oh gosh, you can't even. Well, the can't meatballs tell. taste like, you know, they have the same consistency, same juiciness, and they taste exactly like uh, an authentic Italian meatball that you make with pork and veal and beef. And I don't know why anybody would do it. They're excellent. Yeah, and obviously our, our cholesterol count just rocks. Yeah, saturated fats out of our diet. Anyway, we're very happy about that. Um, I guess that's really it, huh? I can't think of Is anything it? else. We've been going through closets, doing some cleaning, getting some of that stuff out of our lives. You know, here's the problem with a lot of it. Maybe you experience the same thing. I would think if you've been, uh, you know, around a while, you know, as you you gain stuff in your home, you know, you and things that are old, you say, oh my gosh, this platter belong to my mother or I've bought this platter I have a platter that I bought 50 years ago we never use it can I give it away no so we have those kinds of things in in the place you know and things are shoved up into closets that we say gosh you know do you want to really get rid of that oh you know there's this memory thing attached to it we have so oh, many dishes gosh almighty and so many sets of dishes and china and crystal that we don't use. We don't even bring it out on no. special occasions. No. Once, once in a great while. Yeah. But it just takes up space. And and yet there's this thing you say, well, or we've tried to sell a, a couple times. Nobody wants it, and they're beautiful, and they're in, in incredible condition. But it's like there's no market for it, and we're trying to give it away. You Everybody's know what I mean? Everybody's got too much stuff. We have, and we are one of them. Oh yeah. Yeah. And so it's been kind of hard, but we've been doing a little shuffling of stuff out and the shuffling stuff around. But we've been doing that. When our nieces and nephews, after we're gone, go through this place, they're going to say, what the hell were they thinking? Yeah. But, I think all of us do it. Yeah. Oh, I think so. So we've been doing that. And I don't know, just yeah. odds and ends, you know. It's really cold now, and so we're kind of hunkering down for winter. And I guess that's it. Listening to good music. Mm. Oh, yeah. We're food. on Spotify, which is $10 a month. I'll tell you what, that's kind of like the best $10 you can spend. Any artist, any artist's albums, except Joni Mitchell, she doesn't play. Any albums, any artists, you can click in there and they've got it. If you want playlists of these people, they've got it. And so we've been listening to some just lovely Christmas music. Christmas and of course oh uh, a classical and uh, the Messiah is on there the whole Messiah and anyway we've been enjoying anything you want really it's true you know we used to watch this television series called Bosch yes and uh, it's about an LA cop and anyway he was a jazz uh, audiophile and he had the turntable and the you know the amplifier and stuff and I said oh God I'd love a turntable and amplifier but why? You know, ten dollars a month, and I don't have to spend outrageous amounts to buy records that get scratched and yeah, and all that. And I can listen to a absolutely any kind of music. Anything, I mean, seriously, anything. Classical, jazz, uh, um, foreign language. You know, uh, foreign uh, music. It's it's amazing. Spotify. Oh, a Christmas special we saw recently was the Andrea Bocelli. Uh, family Christmas. Yeah, they're up on the top of Mount Blanc in Unreal. the Alps. Unreal. You got to check it out. If for nothing, even if you're not an Andrea Bocelli fan, the scenery is just spectacular. So, Honestly. Yeah. Well, listen. Are we done here? I think so. We want to wish you all such a 
wonderful holiday season. We hope that you receive not just materially, but you receive everything you possibly could want yeah. out of life. Whether it's Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, whatever you celebrate, we hope uh, hope it's everything. It brings happiness, health, um, good times. Good All friends, good food, friends, and we consider drink. you friends. <laughs> we really do. We consider you friends. We are so happy that you come, come in to watch us. I know we're sometimes kind of wacky, sometimes kind of melancholy, but um, sometimes sometimes kind of dull. <laughs> we are sometimes very dull, but you come and see us, and we love you for that, and we love love that you. Uh, I've been at this video channel for a long time, and. There's a progression, and there's a couple setbacks, and then I proceed into to more betterness. And um, so you're taking that journey with us, and we're appreciative of that. It's the only journey we're taking right now. So Yeah, we're not going anywhere. Yeah. So have a wonderful holiday, and we wish you the best, and we're going to clink our glasses to you guys. Take Plastic care, everyone. <laughs> well, we're going <laughs> to knock them down and break them. See you all very soon. Take care. Uh, Stay safe. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.